draw. This is crazy. Ma'am, are you a whore? Hello, hello, hello. All right, everybody sent it to me. We have to do it. Let's do this thing, shall we? <laughs> it's Kim in court for traffic. Let's go. All right. Ask you, uh, I, would you let him? Can the judge talking? I'm sorry, Roger. My client is asking. Big shout out to our Nevada judges, of course. The Nevada versus Ken. Kim Dennis Valdino, 22 CR 041030. I'll link to the video in the description below. Mike Dickerson, I'll be happy to stay. You're on our part number 13476. Joseph Gerson, 13876. Your Honor, with Mr. Kim Valdino at Liberty Clan. I've heard a bunch because I have messages, but I have not watched this myself. I, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm in custody on probation, Judge. That's a correction. Right. I don't know what I'm here doing here. Okay. <laughs> One more outburst, unless you ask a direct question. Okay. Uh, anything we need to address before we proceed, Mr. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that it's possible that we may need to take some portion of this into another day. Your Honor, um, after discussions with my client, he would object to uh, that only because your order at the last hearing was we are going forward, that's it. No ifs, ands, or buts. We're here, we're ready to go forward. Um, Let's cross that bridge when we get to it, we'll see what's going on. We're starting the trial, I'll figure out if we need additional, why we need additional. Anything further, Mr. Gerson? Uh, Mr. Gerson? Uh, your Honor, if I may, just based on the last hearing, you had asked, um, you had mentioned you had denied Mr. Blandino's renewed motion for removal of force counsel on the property law, etc. To prepare a written order, and I may approach. I'll review that order. The court did note that the reason for being is there was a district court order that specifically precluded Mr. Blandino from representing himself in district court in just in uh, Clark County, and based on that order, the Superior Court followed that based on that. That was an order that was also provided by Mr. Dickerson, order granting petition to Mr. Uh, 
and for the court of education as well, the court of appeal recently came down and affirmed all that rule. And so based on that, because of the superior court, the court followed that ruling. And just for the court's edification, Your Honor, um, there is currently pending a, a request for an, a, um, a petition for rehearing in that in, in that particular case. So that decision is not technically final. Just for the court's all right. information. Anything further before it proceeds? State defense. No, Your Honor. All right. Anybody who's a witness or potential witness on the Blandino matter, please wait outside and do not discuss your testimony with any other witnesses. Except for the first witness we're going to call, but have a wait outside for a minute. State, you wish to make an opening statement? No, Your Honor. Defense, at this time, do you wish to make an opening statement or do you wish to reserve? I'm going. I would like to reserve, Your Honor. All right. Reserve the opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, state, your first witness shall be. We're going to call Vance Neeson. Vance Neeson. All right, sir, come take the stand. What's on the stand? Remain standing. Raise your right hand. Face the clerk to be sworn. Oh, oh can you? Good Lord. Stop. You promise where the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Shall be done. Please have a seat. State and spell your first and last name for the record. Vance Neeson. First name B A N C E. Last name N P E S O N. State may proceed with the examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, what do you do for a living? I'm a police officer with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And how long have you been employed in that capacity? Approximately three years. Were you working on September 16, 2022? I was. In that same capacity as a police officer? Yes, sir. And on that particular day, were you uh, in operating in capacity as a patrol officer with a partner? A partner by the name of Officer Martinez. Yes, sir. Around 7:46 p.m., were you in the area of Bruce and Bonanza here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada? Yes, I was. And in that area, what if anything occurred um, at that time? While we were going eastbound on Bonanza, we observed in westbound traffic at the intersection a, a white pickup truck with its uh, emergency lights on and a male subject was outside of that vehicle which i believe the driver door was ajar and it appeared he was at a, a vehicle in front of him i can't recall which vehicle specifically but the vehicle appeared to be parked in that intersection and uh, the male that you saw outside of the vehicle, uh, you see him here in the courtroom, too. I do. Could you please point to him and identify a piece of clothing? So, uh, was it the individual that you're pointing to that stood up while you were pointing to him? Yes, sir. If the record could reflect that the witnesses identified the defendant, Kim Lundino. You know. Good job. Thank you. Uh, and so, I'm glad everyone's having fun with this hearing. Uh, Kim thinks it's the greatest day of his life, and uh, the officer finds it hilarious, <laughs> which it is. <laughs> if I have this right, Mr. Blandino was standing outside in the intersection next to another vehicle? Um, so not directly in the intersection, uh, to the west of the intersection, but yes, uh, standing outside of, of his vehicle, and uh, I can recall at the driver door of that vehicle that was in front of him. Okay. Uh, his vehicle was that white pickup truck? Correct. And you said the door was open to that truck? Yes. And that truck was stopped and parked in the travel. <coughs> Correct. And so what kind of thing did you do at that point in time? Um, we proceeded eastbound, and then um, at some point we made a U-turn and uh, proceeded to try to get closer to see what was going on. Because that didn't appear to be normal. And we noticed um, the truck going south, making the southbound turn on Bruce Street, and we conducted a vehicle stop because um, it was unlawfully parked. And this was that same truck that you saw Mr. Blandino associated with at the intersection? Yeah. Uh, that was a Dodge 
five grand bearing Montana license plate. Yeah. And uh, was that license plate one five two four six seven? Your Honor, yeah. I apologize. I, I'm going to object only that <laughs> Mr. Dickerson has been asking many, many leading questions. Uh, I know we're just trying to keep through it. it. Let's keep it simple. Okay. He objects leading. Okay, let me rephrase. Thank well, you. That, that's usually my decision whether it's not leading or granted or not. Granted, it's the leading. Asking three members, he doesn't go from there. Okay, right. thank you. Do you remember his license plate? Mm, I remember being a Montana plate, not the okay. not the, not the business. No problem. Uh, and so from that point in time, did you guys end up uh, actually stopping the vehicle? Yes. And does Mr. Blandino pull the vehicle over? He does. So the vehicle was in operation on the road at the time that you initiated the traffic stop? Correct. And so it wasn't disabled? No. All right. Mr. Blandino pulls over. You make contact with Mr. Blandino's yeah. vehicle? My partner, Officer Martinez, was uh, making verbal contact while I approached the passenger side for cover and officer safety. Okay. So Officer Martinez was the officer primarily contact. Contact officer, yes. All right. Uh, from your position on the passenger side, what, if anything, did you see? Uh, something that stood out to Aww. me was the ignition that appeared to be tampered with. Okay. Um, can't remember exactly how it was tampered with. I believe there was a screwdriver either inside or next to it, which is indicative of uh, possibly a stolen vehicle. Okay. And so uh, from that point in time, was Mr. Blaine, you know what, did he make any statements about that in particular? I think um, once Officer Martinez had a break in a conversation with him during the initial contact, I had made a comment about it. And Mr. Blandino was demonstrating how he uses that screwdriver to turn it on due to the, the ignition was damaged. Okay. And so his indication was that he regularly uses the screwdriver to turn on the vehicle. Correct. Okay. And um, did you have an opportunity to see whether Mr. Blandino provided a driver's license to Officer Martinez or yourself? I recall him. Uh, Attempting to provide some sort of driver's license to Austin Martinez. It was, it was hard to hear the exact uh, words they were using, but I do recall him attempting to provide some sort of identification. Yeah. Okay. And uh, later on, ultimately, there's uh, some items that are impounded from the vehicle and seats. Is that right? Yes. And did you have an opportunity to take photographs of those items? I did. Okay. If I may, Your Honor, I have mm -hmm. my hand here. State proposed exhibits two, three, and four. You have a chance to review those, Mr. Kirsten? I'm, I'm, I'm doing sorry, sorry. Now, Your Honor. I'm sorry. You had a chance to review them previously, I'm assuming. Review those previously, correct? Uh, I, in other cases, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. All right. May I approach, Your Honor? Thank you. So I'm showing you State Proposed Exhibit 2. Can you have a look through that? Exhibit four. 
you recognize that? <clears throat> okay, thank you. And um, all these items were seized um, from the front uh, passenger side of the front compartment of the, that vehicle by detectives. I can't recall exactly where in the vehicle it was recovered, but yes, it was recovered. The substance of the documents that you reviewed and that you photographed, uh, is it fair to say that they indicate something to the effect of the driver's license? Uh, those documents, no. Well, they're not actual driver's licenses, right? Right. Uh, but there's, uh, are there items in there or, or things in there that indicate that they could attempt it to be used as a drug. Objection, yes. speculation. Counsel, straight? Not speculation, Your Honor. It's based upon his review of the documents and the items there. And in fact, I'll just move to the admission of state proposed. Two, three, the, four. Issue, the, the, the question is, is whether or not they proposed to be used as. Yes. And for him to say they could be, it's one thing that he could say they look like documents that could. You consider that that's one thing i accept that but there's been no allegations that it's been proposed as a driver's license well can i make an offer proof go ahead so uh state proposed exhibit four is certified records that mr blandino had with him with these documents uh, a citation a complaint for an unlicensed driver that was filed in the municipal court of boulder city uh, some years ago in fact uh, 1998. Uh, in these documents, it actually shows the same documents that Mr. Blandino was using here that are state proposed exhibits three and two, um, where in fact it was used as a driver's license. And so thus, the ability for this officer to clean that information is, is clear from looking at these documents. Well, I'm not sure that's what the testimony was, Your Honor. The question was, could these be used as such and such and such? And he's not qualified. That's an, an expert opinion. That's he never gave any testimony about that's what the case is. So I, I renew my objection as, as to the state as to the testimony itself. I grant the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. As to whether or not they're admissible, there's something different. It's found within there. They can make a determination and argument based on that. So <laughs> admissions of them may be different than his determination of what they are. Yeah, I mean, Your Honor, I'm only doing Mr. Dickerson's job for him. If he wants to admit these, will you stop at the nonsense? Oh, oh, what? Oh, Just oh. make a clear objection. Oh, sorry, sorry, Your Honor. Okay. So, as to the statement of what it could be used Please stop for, with the nonsense. A lot what of he observes and believes they could be is his determination based on his information. Sure. Allow that in for that because there's no allegation that it was an attempt to be used at this point. So, as to the uh, moving, are you moving into evidence at this point? Yes. Exhibits two, three, and four, Mr. Gersten. No objection. Objection. Uh, exhibits two, three, and four should be admitted at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. So, uh, sir, I have in my hand state exhibit four. I'm going to bring this up to you. Where was this item located? Um, I don't recall which of those uh, booklets. Uh, it was located, but it was certainly located in one of those booklets in the back of it. And uh, I know that for a fact because this, the folds on this paper, it was folded up to fit one of those booklets. Okay. And uh, State's Exhibit 2 is one of those booklets you're referring to? Yeah. And State's Exhibit 3 is the other booklet you're referring to? Correct. Uh, they, fair to say they appear very similar in their contents? Yes. Okay. Uh, Moving to State's Exhibit 2, going to the second page of this exhibit, what does it say here? Eli Means, King of Israel, Diplomatic Passport. And then moving to the fourth page of this exhibit, what do you see on this page? Um, it would be Mr. Blandino's full name, it appears to be his signature. Uh, underneath that, it says signature bearer, and then it appears to be his photograph. Okay. On the other page, is there a section here in the middle that indicates driver's license permit? It does 
say that, but I don't, I don't see anything else that would indicate that. Would be it. Okay. Uh, in looking at this, based upon your training experience, is this a valid driver's license? No. Okay. Going to states proposed exhibit or state exhibit three. Uh, is this the other book that you were talking about? Yes, sir. All right. Going to the second page of this exhibit, what does it say at the top there? Elohim's King of Israel diplomatic passport. All right. Going here to the third page of this exhibit. What does this show here? Um, it shows Ms. Ben Blandino's full name, uh, his signature, and underneath the signature bearer, as well as his photograph. Okay, and on the other page on the right, does it also show a driver's license area? It does say that, yes. All right. Uh, is this document here, everything contained in this booklet, is this a valid driver's license? No. Okay, and then we go back to States Exhibit 4. This item, what does this depict? This would depict uh, a criminal complaint for Mr. Blendino. Uh, Municipal Court of Oversight. Okay, and is it dated there? Yes, 3rd of July, 1998. Okay. Um, here we go to the third page of this exhibit. Uh, what does this show here? Well, I can't say which booklet exactly, but it appears to be one of those booklets that has been opened to the, I believe that's the third and fourth page and scanned. Okay. Uh, does it appear to have writing up top? Yes. It's, what does that say? August 10th, 1998, 12 p.m., Office Depot. Okay. And their phone number? 702 Is that consistent with the facts? Yes. All right. And what we're seeing there that has been scanned and faxed, does that appear to be the same page that you were looking at there on both of the last two exhibits? three and two that depicted his photograph on the one page with his name and then the driver's license section on the other page. Yes. All right. Uh, going to the next page of this, is this a photograph at the back of that page? Yes, it is. Indicating a certification by the court? Yes. And then here on this On the fifth page here, uh, what do we see? Um, this appears to be the uh, resolution of this case. Okay. This section down here, are you able to read what that says? Yeah. Uh, defendant agrees to plead no contest to charge and a fine of 25 plus 15 plus 10 dollars. And then under that, does it say? I'm going to jack. I have a question. No, no. regarding this, though, does he say it was a disposition of this case? No, of the Boulder City case. That's what he said, though. Of this case. Of oh, this case. That, 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 yeah, so it's so referring to say the this Boulder case. City. Correct. Okay, okay. This is a Boulder Hold City. On. Well, look who walked in. Hello. It's it's Ben Bateman. Ben, I've got a very interesting case. It involves a guy named Kim Blandino. Oh, Kim <laughs> Blandino? Is it Blandino? I've heard of him. <laughs> this this individual Blandino. is okay. taking his uh, traffic ticket to a full trial. Well, it's a bench trial. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> What kind Good of Lord. what did what did his patch say? I, I didn't see it close enough. Wait, I'm having trouble hearing you. What you, you can't hear me? Can you hear me now? No, I think it's my sorry. I'm in the office today. I've got a trial coming up uh next week. Otherwise, Look I would have worn my, my nice hoodie. But I know that's gonna be on. Well, <laughs> did did you ever see the, the patch that he had on his pants? Yes, that was. Uh, it was like some religious an ironing thing or incident, like I believe. But I, I couldn't. I, <laughs> it does put me in mind of a, a certain T-shirt he wore at a jury trial one time. 
Yes. The, the oh, yes. wait, wait, you were there. <laughs> Yes. Well, he, he tried to hang it up, didn't he? I, I think I've heard that he, uh, I was there, you know, this obviously didn't start right on time. I stopped and talked to Alex from Arnhemata Judges and talked to Kim and it was Joe Gerson's birthday that day. So I wished him a happy birthday and wondered what he did to deserve this. But, uh, who, what's the prosecutor? What's his name again? The prosecutor Dickerson. Yeah. Mike Dickerson. Mike Dickerson. Yeah. He was, he was on the, he was in New Jersey case. I, I think he, I think he's a good attorney, but he doesn't. He's he's uh, getting chippy with uh, Joe. Yeah, they got a little, little they get a little spicy. <laughs> Joe's uh, Joe's a little bit more adversarial in his approach. Let's say I love Joe. Joe's yeah, great. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's 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 get this party going again. Now, objection. I, I don't. I don't understand. What what does a case from? 20 some odd years ago have to do with what we're doing today. Mr. Dixon, yeah, like yeah, I said, defense counsel went all in. And so, sir, sure. my, your honor, my, my response to that objection would be that this actually goes to show that the defendant provided these documents as a driver's license in that case, which is going to be further referenced in this case as well. Well, I can, go ahead. your honor, I have to object. There were, there were charges in this case about false identification. Those were dropped. Yes. So now we're getting to double jeopardy issues because this case has started. And what we're looking at, though, is this. I'm assuming people in the city have some people driving by without a license, correct? Right. This was the knowledge of the defendant at the time of this matter, having prior knowledge. Oh, who's that? Baffled brain. Joe has stuck with Kim for so long because he's not allowed to withdraw. <laughs> His motions to withdraw have been denied. <laughs> I've been there. Okay, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> you, you yes, yes, he's legally obligated. <laughs> oh, I do. I'm just, I'm assuming that's what Mr. Dickerson wants to bring in for for that purpose, whether it's relevant or not. I mean, there, there's some relevancy as to the knowledge of these people. Well, my, my confusion, Your Honor, is, is again that they accepted that document as a license 20 some odd years ago. It just seems antithetical to Mr. Dickerson's case, so that's why I'm trying to follow where he's going with this. I, I just don't get it. It's his case. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming that's what's coming in for. Uh, that's what the representation that it's coming in for says. Okay. And may I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. And what does the next portion say? If defendant, I can't see that. Copy of driver's license to municipal court by three. Oh, that's what this brings. Brings copy of driver's license to municipal court by 3 p.m. today. City agrees to dismiss otherwise set for trial on October 22nd, 1998 at 10 p.m. Okay. Uh, and this includes, this was included with his documents that had driver's license or not. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Stay as a witness. Cross examination, Mr. Gerster. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Officer Easton, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, have you ever met Mr. Blandino before? Prior to this? Prior to the, the, the incident where you. No, sir. Okay. And, and if I understood correctly, your the totality of what you were responsible for at that matter was you took some pictures of the exhibits, correct? You're speaking for the. Evidence I'm sorry, exhibits. So, uh, was it one, two, three, four? Two, three, four. Exhibits two, three, four. Those are photographs that you took. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Did you have anything else to do with this case? Uh, yeah, I was on the stop, the traffic stop on the 16th of September 2022. That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you were on the traffic stop. Other than, then, I mean, you were there for officer safety, I believe you said. Officer Martinez was doing whatever she was doing, and then you were on the other side of the truck for officer safety, correct? Um, I wouldn't say specifically just for officer safety. No. I, I'm just going by what you testified. You said you were there for officer safety. That I, that's my, my location where I was at the stop was for the purpose of officer safety. Okay. And then eventually, as part of this case, you took some pictures. Uh, later. Later, yeah. Right. Okay. Was there anything else that you had to do with this case other than those things we just talked about? Uh, well, uh, 
Mr. Blandino was removed from his motor vehicle and placed in front of a patrol vehicle and further detained. Um, so I was part of that, yes. Okay. Okay, but, but nothing else other than that. I mean, I'm just trying to get an idea of what your participation was in this case. Well, I assisted Officer Martinez in discussing probable cause and okay. reasonable suspicion at a certain point. Yeah. Was, was, was the registration on Mr. Blandino's vehicle bad? It was... I don't, I don't recall. All right, it was from Montana, right? Correct. But you didn't find anything wrong with its uh, currency or anything of that nature, correct? I don't believe so. Okay, nothing further. Mr. Dickerson. No, Your Honor, nothing further. Before you leave, Officer uh, Leeson, you saw Mr. Blandino driving a white vehicle, a white truck on the highway which you probably have access to. Yeah. You just pulled over. You pulled him over. Yes. Did you ask him for a driver's license? <coughs> I did not. Did your did your partner ask him for a driver's license? Yes. Was the driver's license produced? I don't know. Okay. Any follow-ups based on that, Mr. Davis? No, Your Honor. Any follow-ups based on that, Mr. Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. This witness free to go? Yes, Your Honor. Release him off to Peter, and you need to just have him stick around. I think you can work. Sir, your, your uh, release off your speeder, you do not need to stick around here anymore as you so desire. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Martinez will be our next witness. Two, three, and four. Can you bring them up? And yes, Ron. Unless you're going to use those. I'll use them briefly, but thank you, guys. Just sir. make sure that we have them here. Hi. What was the name? Cynthia Martinez. Cynthia Martinez. Oh, wait. I remember from the Revo hearing. She's the one that Go take the stand. It's on the stand. Raise your right hand. Took his right license, hand. right? Uh, I I don't know. Oh, so you, this we'll we'll find out. Is she from the Secretary of State or whatever whatever they have out there in Nevada? No, no. She she was one of the cops on the scene. I just remember her from the his Revo hearing. Oh, his probation the, Revo hearing. I get it. She testified where that. she's like. I think when she saw it, she was like. Like didn't want to see it, and that was a. I know that was a big. Well, we'll see. Right, yeah, I haven't watched this. She saw Miss Gardner testimony about the gift, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Talking about. Please have a seat. State and spell your first and last name for the record. My first name is Cynthia. That's C Y N T H I A. Last name Martinez. M A R T I N E Z. May I proceed? Thank you, Robert. What do you do for a living, ma'am? I am a police officer for LBMPD. And how long have you been employed as a police officer? Four years. Uh, were you working in your capacity as a police officer on September 16, 2022? Yes. And on that day, were you uh, paired up with another officer as your partner uh, that day? Yes, officer? it's me. Yes. <laughs> Around approximately 7.46 p.m., were you in the area of Bruce and Bonanza here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada? Yes. There in that area, what, if anything, occurred? So my partner and I were driving in our police car going eastbound on Bonanza and Bruce. We observed a white Dodge Ram pickup truck uh, in a westbound lane, so facing west. The driver was outside of the truck waving his arms uh, next uh, yeah, is weapons. that weapons? To, to that Cops will testify if their day off. They will testify in civilian clothing. They will right. testify so in that uh, white truck was parked in a driveway. Correct. Okay. Uh, and the individual who was outside to get the, the previous officer's truck, haircut. That individual here in the court. Yeah. Yes. You can please point to that individual identify a piece of clothing that they're wearing. The monitor is. Okay. Wearing a suit. Okay. Uh, can you point to him? Yes. Hey, Your Honor, for the record, could reflect the identification of the defendant, Kimberly Dina. No. Thank you. Uh, and uh, what did you do at that point in time? We conducted a vehicle stop. And how is it that you conducted the, the vehicle stop? Can you walk us through that? Okay, so we turned back around and conducted a vehicle stop. First stop and park was prohibited. Okay. And 
uh, by that point in time, when you get back behind Mr. Blandino's vehicle, is he already in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. So yeah. while we were going eastbound, coming down, uh, he saw us and he jumped back into his truck. Okay. And so he began driving? Yeah. All right. And so upon conducting the stop, a second, would you speak up a little so we can hear you? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. How far away from the area of Bruce and Bonanza was it that you conducted the vehicle stop? Not far. I can't recall the exact street. I know I wrote it on the the narrative. All right, no worries. It wasn't far from there. No. And by the time that you conduct the stop, uh, it's you're stopping his moving vehicle, Mr. Blanchard's moving vehicle. Correct. And he in fact pulls over. Yes. And you make contact with Mr. Plenty. Correct. Is he in the driver's seat of that vehicle? Yes. So he's the one that's operating that truck. Yes. Uh, and is he the only occupant of that vehicle? Yes. Uh, well, there at uh, the driver's side door, is it? Yes. Talking to Mr. Blandino, do you ask him for a driver's license? I do. And what, if anything, does he provide you? He provided me with an Arizona identification card. Oh, is that a valid driver's license? No. Okay. Did Mr. Blandino indicate to you whether he had a driver's license? I asked him if he had a driver's license because he gave me an Arizona identification card. He stated he had an international driver's license. Okay. And uh, it's, were you aware of whether an international driver's license or anything called that would be a valid license under your understanding? Sorry, Did you believe that he had a valid license based upon telling you that he had a, an international drug license? No. Okay. Uh, did he make any attempts to give you anything? Yes. He attempted to hand me uh, a document and said it was an international driver's license. Okay. Okay, because it was two, three, Thank you. two, three, and four up here. I have here dates, exhibits. Two and three. Do you recognize those at all? Yes. That's what it should sure. say. You can go through them, but do you recognize the. Yes. Okay. Good, oh dear. And uh, both of these look similar, is that right? Uh, do these appear to be the items or one of the items that Mr. Blandino was trying to provide you? One of them that was like a leather kind of material. Okay, so one of these two items can't say for sure which one. Yes. Okay. And um, what area was it that Mr. Blandino was gathering that item from before trying to give it to you? I can't recall. Okay. Ultimately, um, were you able to do a record check on Mr. Blandino's driver's license? Yes. And did you find that he had a valid driver's license? Okay. Um, and further, the vehicle that Mr. Blandino was driving, uh, was that vehicle registered in Nevada? No, it had a Montana. Case. Do you remember the exact license plate as you sit here today? Off the top of my head, no. Okay, would that have been something that you wrote in the Declaration of Arrest? Yes. Would looking at that help refresh your recollection? Yes. Mike, did you try and get pulled over by her when you were here in Vegas? <laughs> no such luck. No such luck. Okay. And what was the driver's or what was the flight display there? I stayed out of trouble, as you well know. <laughs> okay. That particular license plate, uh, do you recall whether it was valid? I believe it was valid. Okay, but just not a Nevada license plate. That's correct. And the vehicle was not registered in Nevada anymore. Correct. Okay. I mean, but he was uh, whatever. What? It's not, the charge isn't before us, but he was supposed to re-register re it in Nevada, and he couldn't. Yeah, because it appears to me. 
Secretary of State of Pass Witness. Cross examination, Mr. Gerson. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, Officer Martinez, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, last time we spoke, you mentioned that uh, uh, you had said that Mr., like you did today, that Mr. Blandino provided you an Arizona ID, correct? Correct. All right. And then he offered you his international driver's license, correct? That's correct. And if I remember correctly, the last time we spoke, you said once you heard that, you told him to forget it because in your head, that wasn't going to be a valid driver's license, correct? Correct. Okay. So you never actually saw at the stop when you asked him for the driver's license, you never actually saw his international driver's license or the documents that Mr. Uh, Dickerson just showed you, correct? I saw it in his hand. Okay. But you never actually looked at it? I didn't grab it. Okay. He offered it to you and you didn't take it, correct? Correct. Okay. Sure. The plate, the Montana plate we just talked about, you ran that plate through inlets or whatever it was, correct? Correct. Okay. And it came back as valid registration and plates, correct? Correct. A Montana permanent license, a Montana permanent registration, correct? Correct. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. The uh, direct, Mr. No, nothing on that, Your Honor. Thank you. Please hang out outside, Your Honor. Hold on one second. Um, then, Mr. Martinez, you asked for a driver's license of Mr. Blandino. Yes, sir. And you did not receive a driver's license. Correct. You received some documents which he alleged was to be international driver's license. He attempted to show me that I did not get them. Any follow up based on those questions, Mr. Dickerson? No, Your Honor. So, uh, yeah, if I could, Your Honor, I just want to make sure. So, Mr. Blandino did offer you something, but you didn't take it, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Do uh, you want me to have a stick around? Please. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and have a seat in the ante room. Uh, if you have any testimony, please do not discuss your testimony with any of the witnesses at this time. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, you're still in the subpoena. Well, there you go. Okay. She is a fetching lass. Stay. David Shad. Well done. Shad. She's not, not letting her go. S-H-I-D-E. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a traffic case, Ben. Officer, you can't uh, be you careful enough. Detective, come take the stand. Please 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 David Shive, D A V I D S H I V E. All right. So, excuse me, proceed. Thank you. What do you do for a living, sir? I'm a detective in our counterterrorism section. And how long have you been a police officer? Uh, 11 years, sir. Okay. Uh, were you working in your capacity as a detective on September 16, 2022? Yes, I was. And sometime after 7 46 p.m., were you called out to a scene? Uh, of a traffic stop somewhere in the area, generally of Bruce and Bonanza here in Las Vegas. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Uh, the was there a subject that had been stopped by patrol officers? Yes. Uh, and do you see that subject here in the courtroom today? Yes. If you could please point to that individual, identify people yeah. that they were. Counterterrorism. Uh, the reason why, because in the trial I did, he threatened the judge. So um, that's considered domestic terrorism. That's why he's on the on this case. Thank you, uh, Detective. As part of your duties on scene, did you uh, take part in an inventory of the vehicle that Mr. Blandino had been driving? Uh, yes, sir. That was a white Dodge Ram truck. Yes, sir. And um, I'm going to show you here. May I approach, Your Honor? You may. State's exhibits two, three, and four. Do you recognize what you're looking at here? Feel free to look through them. documents uh, that are depicted here in these exhibits, did you 
you locate these? Uh, yes, sir. Where did you locate them? In the glove box. Okay, uh, Mr. Blandino's white truck? Yes. Okay. Um, did you find any driver's license in Mr. Blandino's vehicle? No, sir. Did you find any Nevada registration for that vehicle inside the vehicle? No, sir. Okay. Um, did you then, with these impacts, these documents that are depicted here in these exhibits? Yes, they were. All right. Um, and I assume before that you took them out of the vehicle? Yes. And did Mr. Blandino see uh, these coming out of the vehicle? Uh, yes. Okay. Did Mr. Blandino make any statements about these documents? He was uh, talking about the the third one you showed me there. The, it looks like a Boulder City. Yeah, it's a, this is from a, exhibit four? Yes, sir. It's okay. from a vehicle stop. Mr. Gerson wishes to review that. Appreciate that. Okay, and what was he saying about that? That it was from a vehicle stop in Boulder City and that they accepted those documents. As a driver's license? Yes, sir. Uh, these documents depicted here in states exhibit three and two are either of them valid driver's licenses? No, sir. Okay. All right, stand up as a witness. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, detective, yes. did, did, did Mr. Uh, Blandino offer you those documents at any point during the stop? No, sir. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to uh, observe the, the license plates on the rear of Mr. Blandino's vehicle? I did not. Sir. Okay. Did, did you receive any information at any point from an official source, and let's anything like that, that the vehicle was unregistered? No, sir. Okay. And did you get any uh, information from NLEX or any other source that uh, that the Montana registration that it had was lapsed or not in place at any point? No, sir. So as far as you know, the vehicle was properly registered, correct? As far as you know? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, Of course, intelligence. Oh. Um, sorry, uh, detective. Did you witness? Uh, your partner was Detective Meade, is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you witness him confiscating the plates off the car? I did. Yes, I did. You did? Okay, thank you. I have nothing further. All right. We direct Mr. Yes. So you are. So witness free to go? Yes. Can I, can I release him off the subpoena? Yes, sir. All right, Detective, please, uh, you release off your subpoena. Please do not discuss your testimony with any other witnesses at this time until the end of the trial. Thank you very much. You, have, you, uh, you are released off of your subpoena. You may leave the court. Huh? So why does he get to go? All right. Mr. Dixon. He's not hot Next enough. This will be. Uh, Joe, Joe just keeps the I get it. I get it. Off. 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 Remain standing, raise your right hand, face the clerk to be sworn. The Tom is swearing the testimony you're about to give, show me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Rebel Linda. Please have a seat. State well, she goes by your Rebel for sure. Last name for the record. Um, Rebel Linda Hong, R E B E L I N D A, Rebel Linda Hong, H O N G. All right, state may proceed. Thank you. What do you do for a living, ma'am? Um, I am a specialist um, from Broad and Probation. Okay, for the Nevada Division of Parole and Probation? That's correct. And uh, are you assigned to supervise Mr. Blandino? Uh, yes. Uh, and in the your capacity as a supervising officer, are you also the custodian of records for his file? Yes. Okay. Uh, and in fact, you brought that with you today, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, <laughs> we have a couple items from that file. I have in my hand state proposed to five and six. Five crumpled singles. Defense counsel, may I approach your honor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are they yeah. moist uh, too? Please. I want to use the word. Oh, moist. I'm sorry. They, so you they use your glass. I was just going to say, do not refer to any of the documents. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm going to show you your case proposed for this five. Can you take a look at that? 
Just a little music. Why she reads? The dance party. <laughs> oh yeah. Ah, uh, cut the party short, man. All right, sorry. <laughs> you just feeling it? There we go. Yeah. Do you recognize this document? Okay. Um, yes. And uh, is this a document that is uh, held within Mr. Blandino's file uh, as part of the records of the Nevada Division of Home Probation? Yes. Uh, specifically, is it a pre-sentence investigation questionnaire? Yes. And that would be information that was provided by Mr. Blandino? That's correct. Before he even got onto probation? That's correct. Okay. And that's kept by you? Yes. Okay. And this is a fair and accurate description of that? Yes. This uh, document would also contain the address that he reported at the time? That's correct. Okay. State's going to move for the admission of state proposal to the five. Yes, sir. I'd like to take a look at first. I. Assuming we're just looking for our residents on this. Well, that's the problem, Your Honor, um, because if that's the issue, I mean, obviously there's some other things in there. There's been no, uh, that's what Shelly here, and I get to bring in prior bad acts. Now, we're not going to be relying upon any prior bad acts. The purpose is to identify uh, an address. Hold, hold on. Yeah, we're good. Uh, this is to identify. He's residing I'm going to limit to that only. I guess uh, other things about priors, criminal activity, or anything like that, I'm not going to rely on. So, Your Honor, I guess the only issue I have is you're already using the word residency as opposed to, let's say, domicile or where he lives, because residency has a legal meaning as well. And I don't, you know, I'm, that's where I'm kind of like, this it this. And I'll show you, Ron, just to show you what my my problem is. There's a form from the DMV that talks about a certification of DMV residency. This document is not accepted to prove that. So again, if you're just looking to I see think what it's you, more of an argument that you would make okay. as to that. What I'm saying is this: is so I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dickerson, that you're attempting to show. Uh, where Mr. Landino resides. That's correct, Your Honor. Uh, through this document. All other information regarding that, I'm going to exclude because it's talking about other things that are not material to this case. Thank Prior you. bad acts that have not been in no petrochelli here on this matter. I'm not going to allow any of that in. I'm not going to rely upon that. I will limit my scope as to that information only. While I may, if the document gets introduced and be introduced in its whole, the court is limiting it to what it's going to be. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, with those caveats, Your Honor, no objection. All right. Thank you. To what is the second page of this exhibit? Mind you, that this is a double sided exhibit. Let me stop you there for a minute. I'm sorry. As to the admission with the limited purpose, your position on the admission of exhibit five. Well, because I think you moved to admit it, right? Yeah, he moved to admit it. And I said we have no objection with the caveats that you said. I have no problem for the this record. There's a statement that Mr. Blandino made, if that's what they're for the limited purpose, and that is an issue in this matter but all the other stuff in there has no uh, so and, and i would also request that took that out of his ruling uh be sealed in some regard because it does have uh, social security right. like that. I, I mean I, I don't want to bore everybody with intricacies here but i took it that as the judge saying i'm admitting this for the limited purpose of the, uh, of establishing his residence the will be admitted. Is, that, is that the way you see it yeah but i think yeah obviously they're trying to split hairs as to what it means to be a a resident you know this is yeah i mean all, all of this is all this kind of thing is sort of silly when you have a bench trial because it's you, you have to argue 
you have to argue all the facts to the judge to, to get a ruling on whether or not the judge can hear it. Right, but the, yeah, but I think but, it's yeah, Kim, I mean, a, a traveler or whatever they call him. I don't know. You know, in, in my opinion, the not, judge has made a nice record. I understand the issues at play. I'm 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 using it for a reasonable purpose. Let's all move on. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Judge Sacento has been doing this for a long time. Yeah. He's, for the limited purpose of identifying residency or uh, his uh, domicile, if you will, that's the purpose to show whether it does it or not. Something that the court can determine. But we'll seal that with the internal seal of this court. So, Zip 570 unit at this time. Okay. Ma'am, here, uh, looking at the top of this, uh, section says defendant information. Uh, does it indicate Kim Blandino's name there under name? Yes. Or next to name? Uh, next to these words where it prompts the uh, person who's filling it out uh, to write something, it says residence address. And what does it say there? Um, residence address C is less O. Las Vegas, Nevada, 89101. Okay, and this document also is dated when it was prepared. Looking to the first page of this document, does it have a date? Ah, uh, yes. And what's the date on that? March 10, 2022. All right. Can you... Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, Mr. Blandino is also required to check in regularly as part of his probation. That's correct. Um, and uh, so you're also mm -hmm. the keeper of those records? Yes. Uh, here I have state's proposed exhibit six. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Okay. Hey. And, and do you recognize it to be one of his monthly recordings? Yes. Okay. Uh, and this is specifically a monthly reporting from uh, August 10th of 2022. That's correct. Okay. This would also include the address that Mr. Blandino reported on that date. Yes. Okay. State's going to move to the admission of state proposed exhibit six for that purpose. Can I see it, Your Honor? Sure. If you're willing, Your Honor, I would have this admitted as an exhibit with the same caveats as the last document. I think, again, to determine residence. I agree. Reside. That's what I think, Your Honor. But only the, the only purpose, unless you want to stipulate that, that, that is a statement there and then he's required to provide that residence. No, I'm not going to stipulate to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to that. All right. With the limited, uh, if the court is only going to review it, it's his obligation to provide for where he resides. All right, ma'am. There on the front page of this, and the same moves for that admission. Is it a six shot we admitted this time? Thank you. Here on exhibit six, uh, is this the monthly reporting, the monthly report from Mr. Blandino on uh, August 10th, 2022? That's correct. Uh, and did Mr. Blandino report his address here? That's correct. This yes. Same address as. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. It's a mischaracterization. I'm sorry. Mischaracterization of what it says. What does it say? Exhibit six has been admitted, so we can publish it. What does it say? As to the which is we're focusing only on is reporting <laughs> as to where only right. And it says your address, your address. care of that, that care of is important. Just, <laughs> well, it, it, just pause it one thing. It, I mean, this is what that Kim explained to me as to why, because he always put it as that, as uh, care of the address in question, because he's an ambassador that can be called, you know, anywhere at any time. So he's not <laughs> a permanent... He does, no, but it's been consistent since, I, I, you, you know, know I, I got it. on the case, I, I what, in 2019 <laughs> when I first, you know, and, and it's always been like that. And I, I don't know, I just always saw it, never thought of it and, or never, I don't know, just didn't question it, you know. <laughs> but no, then when all it. this it's comes the, up the character, afterwards I mean, and I was talking to him, he's like, no, that's why I put that on there because of his you know, that he's an ambassador or whatever, the international man of the kingdom of Christ or whatever it is, you know. Oh, Cam, uh, just pay yeah. your ticket, dude. <laughs> so, you know it's, it's, you know. Funny. It's interesting because you and I haven't seen this. I held off and a whole bunch of people sent it to me. The only mm -hmm. part I did see is is 
Um, the only part I did see is the very end because I wanted to see what ha- like where where it left, you know. So I just watched the last couple minutes to see, you know, we'll get right. there, but to see what happened. And the, the in that last few minutes, when the judge says this is longest traffic uh, trial that I can remember. Uh-huh. Oh, Kim has the biggest smile. He turns around, looks at the camera, and has the biggest smile on his face. You, <laughs> you're gonna love it if you haven't seen it. All right. All right. Yeah. Well. He, yeah. He, he he loves it. He's still he's still proud of his traffic ticket from 1979. You know, that was a two dollar <laughs> parking ticket that yeah, yeah cost him whatever it was thousands to collect. Are you arrested? Yes, Your Honor. To where they're living is not necessarily their residence. So is it okay for somebody that's on probation just to not report their residence? Uh, Again, objection, Your Honor. Well, residence has we, a legal... Okay, here's the problem. Is we're maybe conflating the two. Residence being... My residence could be my home. My residence could be, as we learned in law school, where I'm staying currently, or where my home state is, where I would register to vote. As a student, Maybe in one area, but my residence is different. Yeah. I understand that. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Residence, as Mr. Dickerson was saying, is where he needs to live. Right? And it may be temporary. I get that. Thank you. All right. Okay. And also, Your Honor, I, I would be admitting this for another purpose. Um, here, under this report, is there a section that says vehicles driven? Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, in this section, what does it list as that top vehicle? Okay, top vehicle, nine, year 1994, make, dodge, model, ram, color, white, license number, question, question mark, owner, Kim, insured by, uh, and plus A. By who the last one insured by? Owner, Kim, insured by, N slash A. Okay. All right, man. And then we go so back. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I apologize, Your Honor. Here's the problem. This is a document that is dated before the incident. So I don't know what that has to do. The relevance of that has to do with anything out of September, in September of 22. That document, if I remember correctly, was dated August of 22. So this is a document predating the incident. The yes. fact you can't see the relevance isn't something I need to respond to, right? <laughs> It's showing that there was he was residing or had a residence or a place to be he lived at. By a little snippy. September. Right, but he's talking about a vehicle, which is the subject of what we're talking about. Yes. What does that have to do? Because he's being charged with uh, resident failure to obtain a lateral registration. And that's what he's attempting to show. Again, Your Honor, I, I don't I don't understand the relevance of I understand the relevance of showing an address but whether or not this uh-huh, vehicle Lord, Lord. is listed or not listed or whatnot on the, yeah yeah it got me um, <laughs> did a rim document. shot you have a, Again, because have a goat predated sound the, the document the the, the 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 allegation is he violated on um, the september of 22. and this is predating that August. This is August. Yeah. The document says this is where I live. This is the car I drive. Mm-hmm. All right. September is a violation. All right. So he's trying to establish that there was a need to have it registered as a non as a resident. Okay. All right. I mean, again, I know I don't see it, but I mean that that's what I'm never, assuming. Iris. The answer is never. Right. And you're using the word, Your Honor. You're assuming. So I'm. Um, just I'm letting him do his okay. case. Okay. You know, and I, I understand. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. And then we go back to State Exhibit 5, and I'm going to admit this for this purpose as well. Ma'am. Okay, now I just can't get hung Jerry out of my mind. <laughs> I hope you're happy, Mortimer. This is going to be what is 
marked as page 16 of 14 on this exhibit. There's a section here. It says no, Charlie, assets I'm, and liabilities. I'm saying never. Is that right? Right. Under that, there's boxes to fill out for assets and a description of those assets. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, the first line here of, on this asset section <laughs> for Mr. Blandino's pre-sentence investigation questionnaire, what does he list? Um, Mr. Blandino um, listed asset Dodge truck. That's a Dodge truck? Yes. That's Ram 25, description, that's Ram 2500, 1992. Um, Is that Montana, MT? MT, 15, that, 2, 4, 6, 7, E. Okay. 1, 5, 2, 4, that, 6, 7, um, E. Yes. Would that be leading? <laughs> okay, and again, that document was from March of 2022. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Ma'am, the date March of 2022. What was the date on that? March 10th. Uh, Ma'am, has Mr. Blandio's address always been that same address? Since the Division of Parole Probation has been supervising him. That's correct. And um, there we go. I correct that they began supervising him around July of 2022. That's correct. And so Mr. Blending has never put in for a change of address. No. All right. So that's the witness. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. You actually did a nice job with that. Of course, indulgence, please. Yes. I know what I'm supposed to do. Sorry, Your Honor. Apologies. Can you relate, man? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Your connection with Mr. Blandino is that he's your probationer, correct? That's correct. Okay. And otherwise, you have no idea who he is or what he does or anything of that nature, correct? Correct. Okay. And as a probationer, he is required to remain in the state unless he applies for an interstate compact, correct? Correct. Okay. So he's under, uh, he's actually incarcerated. Even though he's out, he's actually considered to be incarcerated because he's under the power of the state. Correct? Uh, objection. That calls for an improper legal conclusion. I would ask it to be stricken. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm just trying to prove that Mr. Lenino can't go anywhere. I mean, he's, he's, he's required to be in state. It doesn't make him a resident I don't know that he's incarcerated. Because he's required to be hmm. here. And I can give you the case law if you want. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Good. Thank you. So again, just so we're clear, Mr. Blandino cannot leave the state under probation unless he applies for interstate contact, right? All right. Um, Run Katie through the banking machine. Or get your permission. Oh, wait, the permission. Let's yes. stop there for a second. It's too broad. Of a yeah, yeah. I, I, I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. So he, he, essentially, Mr. Blandino is stuck here unless he applies for interstate compact, you give him permission, things of that nature, right? He's not free to just leave the state at his own will, correct? Yeah, all of us here, we're all stuck I have here. to uh, make a correction on that. He doesn't have to apply for interstate compact to go to the other state, but he has to request for a travel permit. Right, travel permit. From me. Yes. Okay. So if he wanted to return to Arizona, he needs your permission, correct? Correct. If he wants to go back to Montana, he needs your permission, correct? Correct. Okay. The documents that you read, um, where are they? I'll say, if I can approach around. And these have been marked as uh, six, five and six, Your Honor. States exhibits five and six. So number five, and you were asked to read, and it says residence address, correct? Correct. Right. And you read CO, whatever the rest of the address is, correct? Correct. Right. Now there's a CO in the front. You understand that to be care of, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. And the same thing on uh, exhibit six where it says co correct? correct okay and you understand again the co is to be care of correct correct okay and then you talked about the actual uh the truck and for your for all intents and purposes to your knowledge that truck is registered in montana correct, correct. okay <laughs> has mr blandino ever told you that his permanent residence was here in Nevada. Objection here, say. Counsel. 
with your client's state? Uh, yes, Your Honor. State of mind for purposes of um, residency. And if Your Honor will just give me one second, I will give you the quote from the from the matter. <laughs> oh, good lord! We have anybody from Montana in the chat? Kim might be moving there. <laughs> and courts and indulgence here. So the, basically, what is the meaning of a non-resident, Your Honor? And the Attorney General's opinion 265, which was actually admitted in 817-1938, said that the term non-resident is to be construed in the most generally accepted well, meaning. Brian, and Brian is going to give him the state permission to indicate permanence. Go to Arizona. So I'm going to the state of mind of Mr. Blandino as to whether or not he was a resident. Okay, Joe's making me nuts. But I'm going to compliment him. I, he is, he is, I mean, we're down to state of mind on this issue. He is looking cases up. He's going to the wall for this. And he's got nothing. <laughs> Joe's a bad idea, dude. He really is. I love Joe, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you want, yeah, you just want to say, come on, dude. But what, what else is he supposed to do here? He's got to defend him, and these are the these are the approaches you have to take. President, yeah. that was his intention or not. So I'm just asking if he has ever told. I'm going to give you a little leeway because the state has introduced some evidence to show that he said where he resided and where he lived. Right. And whether or not that's a residency or not is illegal. Okay, I'll, I'll ask it. I'll ask it. So you can I'll give a little leeway on that. All right, I'll ask you. Ever it. said anything like that? And I'll allow the statement to be made because exactly. the statement against interest was brought in. So to give context to that statement, I'm allowing you to explore a little further. Thank you. All right. I'll ask it this way, Ms. Hong. As far as you know, Mr. Blandino's address was care of uh, 441 16th Street, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any information? Do you have any information that that was his permanent residence for purposes of residence objection this let's put it this testifies about the information she has i'm just asking if there's anything more yeah but she may not understand again we're, we're completing if you understand with the legal term of residence right we all learned in law school we all go to different law schools and they say you live in here now but you can vote in another place because your residency is there. You know, that's what you said. You know, okay, so I'm allowed for that purpose. Yeah, that's all, that's all I'm asking. You said anything else. Go Thank ahead. you. Sir. All I'm asking you is has there been any indication that Mr. Blandino made no charge years of therapy? Permanent residence? Anything that you trick. know? <laughs> um, no. Okay, that's all I have. All right. Well, Thank you, Your Honor. You Redirect, Mr. Ma'am. Probationers are required to report to you their residence, right? Right. And the residence that Mr. Blandino reported to you was in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada, correct? Right. Right. Again, right. Your Honor, mischaracterization. It's care of. It's not. I understand. I've got all that in. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. <laughs> and that's the only residence that he's ever reported living in. That's correct. Uh, has he applied for interstate compact? No. So Mr. Blandino has never applied for interstate compact to any other state in the United States? No. Okay. Uh, has he applied for a travel permit? No. Okay. So he has just stayed here and reported this as his address here in Las Vegas. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Follow up based on that. Just a couple. If, if So is a probationer required to apply for interstate compact at any point? Uh, yes. No, no, I'm oh, sorry. No, but, are they required? If they're not going anywhere, are they required? No. Okay. And are they required to travel? No. Okay. So if Mr. Blandino was afraid to leave the state for fear of getting objection, calls for speculation. I think there's those two. Well, well, well afraid. Afraid. withdrawing your honor. I think well. we've acknowledged that if he wants to leave, he's got to get permission. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. 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 Dickerson was asking if he ever had before. I'm offering alternative reasons as to why he might not. I withdraw the question, Your Honor. Right. Nothing further. Mr. Dickerson, any follow-ups based on those questions? 
the sugar cube. Uh, then we try something else. So, how long have you been doing this job? Um, in four and a half years. And um, have you dealt with interstate contact matters before? Yes, actually, before this job, I was an interstate contact specialist. Okay. And so, when somebody gets put on probation in the state of Nevada, but they reside in another state in the United States, is that usually when they apply for interstate contact? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. And <laughs> Mr. Blandino, again, never applied for interstate contact. Never. Just one quick follow up, Your Honor. Really? Yes. So, Sue, uh, cross examination? I mean, really? Sue, Sue. Hey, one question, Your Honor. Just one question. Go back and forth. No, no, I, I, the court, you know, I, I, I understand, Your Honor. I understand. Your Honor. Song, is Mr. Blandino in any way, shape, or form required to apply for interstate contact? He's not going anywhere. No. Okay, thank you. Mr. Dickerson, and you obviously have the last word. No, thank you, Your Honor. Is this witness free to go? Yes. Can I release her for subpoena? Uh, Yes, thank you. All right, ma'am, you're, uh, you're free to leave. Uh -huh. You're your release officer. Please do not discuss your testimony with any other witnesses or anybody else at this time until after the conclusion of this trial. You understand? I understand. So if it gets continued for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, or you cannot discuss your testimony. You understand? I understand. We'll you let know. you know. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Dickerson, or Mr. Uh, Gersten, five and six. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you're right. I'll grab them. So just, just keep them all together. Thank you. Uh, we'll call Romel Barba. Barba? Yep. Thank you, Your Honor. Romel Barba. Oh, oh good Lord. We have a client. Uh, uh, Thank you, Your Honor. All right. State of Nevada versus uh, Kim Dennis Blandino, 22 CR 041030. This continuation of the uh, uh, trial at this time. There was a quick break. Go to the five minute break. That being said, state your next witness would be Romel Barba. Romel Barba, B A R B A. That's correct, Your Honor. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Try to take the stand. What's on the stand? <laughs> Remain standing. Raise your right hand. Face the clerk. You sworn. I thought you were the attending officer. Oh, wait, who's this guy now? <laughs> you found a swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be done. Yes. Please have a seat. State and spell your first and last name for the record. First name is Ramel, R-O-M-M-E-L. Last name is Barbara, B-A-R-B-A. Hi, State. <laughs> Thank you. Sir, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm, uh, more than five dollars for sure. <laughs> well, since the money goes to Mike, and, maybe you should ask uh, him. Are you assigned to the house arrest unit? I was assigned to the house arrest unit. I don't know how that works. I'm big pimping now. Okay. Yeah. And, um, Wait a second. Did you supervise? Kim Blandino, while he was on house arrest? Yes. Uh, and am I correct that that was from approximately December 2021 until July of 2022? Yes. And that the, it was during that time period that you were his supervising officer? Yes. And during that time period, did you have the opportunity to actually go and visit Mr. Blandino where he was residing? Yes. And where was that? That was at here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada? Yes. Uh, did Mr. Plagino ever request a move? No. Did he ever indicate to you that he needed to move out of state because that's where he was residing? No. Okay. And how many times did you visit him there at that address? I want to say at least three to four times. Okay. Between those yeah. dates? Yes. Yeah, during those dates. Yes. Uh, we had to visit him every month. Back then, he was on a high level. Okay. Uh, did Mr. Plagino have a lot of contact with you? Um, via text messaging and phone phone calls. Okay. Keeping you updated on things? Yes. Asking you questions? Ask me a question, you know, just basic stuff like if you can go here, you know, because he was in high level, he needed to get approval to go. Somewhere. Okay. Uh, did he ever indicate to you that he needed to get approval to go uh, out of state because that was his home? No. Okay. Thank you. Dave has a question. Well, is this his house arrest officer? Sorry, I wasn't distracted by the chat there. Barbara. Barba, Barba. Yes. This is guy. Um, Officer Barba. He just, um, he's just saying that he never requested to go surveillance over Mr. to another Ray. state. Um, he must have been house arrest. Well, so. you can say yes and no because we were we were supervising him through counter supervision. Okay, and so I guess what I'm saying is, did you have twenty four seven supervision over Mr. Blandino? No. Okay, so you don't know where he was or what he was doing twenty four seven during the time that you were responsible. No. Okay. 
And um, it's safe to say that you, you, you can't look inside Mr. Blandino's head to know what he's thinking, correct? No. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. All those based on that. Yeah. Was Mr. Blandino wearing a GPS bracelet? Yes, he was. So you were getting constant 24 7 updates on his location? Yes. And um, during that time, did you ever know that Mr. Blandino, between December 2021 and July 2022, had left the state? No, he hasn't. Okay. Thank you. Could, could you leave the state without asking for permission? No, you can't. Okay. Thank you. And he never asked to leave the state. My fault. Let's keep that question in yeah. No, he it, he cannot leave the state. He would have to ask permission. And he never asked. No, he hasn't. Uh, are you guys done? Yes, sir. Officer, um, from December 2021 to July 2022, he was on high level house arrest. Um, he was downgraded to medium. I want to say he was on house arrest. Yes, on house arrest. He visited his residence, you said, three to four times. Yes. Remember the address of the residence? Yes, it was. At that time, did you see a vehicle parked outside the house? There's vehicles parked out there, but I don't know if it was his or not. Did you never identify any vehicle that he had during those times? No. When's the last time you visited him between that time of December 2021 and July 2022? When's the last time, if you remember? I want to say. You don't know exactly. Don't know exactly, but the month would be March. Okay. The request is based on that, Mr. Davis. No, you are. No, you are. All right. This witness free to go. Can I release him off the subpoena? Yes. All you. right. So you release off your subpoena. Subpoena. Please do not. Uh, provide, please do not discuss your testimony with any other witnesses at this time until this trial is over. So you understand? Thank you very much for your time. So thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That's going to conclude our witnesses for today. All right. State has rested. There was some discussion the bench. It's a uh, quarter to one. Uh, you want to take a few minutes? I uh, I would request that we continue this to another day. I do have a uh, being grand jury at one o'clock today. Okay. And we didn't get started. There was some discussion about. I'll watch this part now. This is what I put on the thumb. Right. I think that's a very fair bet, Your Honor. And, and so, um, however, Your Honor, but the Torriento says it's actual, going to trial. And if, again, it's your call. The state is rested. This is a time when I would probably be bringing a motion to dismiss this case. I'm going to do this and other stuff before I do that. I guess. So, so you have an officer need now or wait or what? You know, Testify? I, again, I serve the pleasure of the court, Your Honor. So I understand where you're going. Um. I think probably given the time frame of this, of this being one of the longest traffic trials I've ever seen, definitely cases will be a little shorter. Uh, that being said, why don't we set this for another time? Come on. The state has rested its case in chief. <laughs> Understanding the state always has a right to bring up its rebuttal case. Sure thing. All right. Um, two weeks. I want a date because, I, as I understand, as the state the defense is going to uh, rest, the state of the rest of the defense is going to proceed, and I'm assuming your client may be testifying and may or may not see him. Uh, I think he has that right to make the decision. Mr. Dixon has a grand jury indictment. I do, and I'm supposed to be starting a murder and kidnapping trial on the 12th. How do we get started? Finish. Right. But my apologies, Your Honor. No, it's not, 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 it's, listen, here's all the witnesses that come, we hear. All the evidence that's to be presented, we hear. That being said, uh, today is the first. Uh, you want to kick it up? It's the 22nd of February? No. Can we do the next week? Which is that? The 8th? The, uh, the 15th. Yeah. Eighth, I've got matters going on. The the week after the fifteenth, uh, so oh, February twenty sixth that week. <laughs> Cliffhanger. The twenty sixth, actually. You want to put it on the twenty seventh? Yes, I can do the twenty seventh. Ms. Gersten, twenty seventh, Your Honor. Yes. Twenty seventh. That is for your case in chief. Um. 
they have to be in Boulder City at 3 30. So we shall hopefully be done by then. <laughs> you hope so too. Traffic. So <laughs> no I understand, Your Honor. All right, so 227 at what time? 227. You know how this goes. We have cases flowing in and out of here all morning long. Um, we probably won't be starting until probably 10 30. Sure. All right. That's yeah, I, I, would you let me? Can you just talking? <laughs> I'm sorry, Runner. My client is asking <laughs> to. What is it you want me to ask him? <laughs> What's his favorite uh, car? Right. I don't know if he's under probation or anything. Oh, if I get clearance from you, I'll ask probation, Judge. He's not under any sort of. I've got no restrictions on him. He's ordered on this matter. There are very little restrictions on him. He's got restrictions. <laughs> He's on so, probation I'm sorry, for the level of the department. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, no. Oh, jeez. 20 seconds. Thank you, Ron. Uh, let's figure. 27. 27. Let's figure around uh, <laughs> 10, 10, 30. Don't okay. come here at 9, 30. Then, because regardless, we're going to be cleaning up cases. Okay. I'll put it on for my other 10, 30. Then. All right. We're just assuming that at that time because I'm going to be cleaning up cases anyway. Mm -hmm. right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Never a dull moment, huh? <laughs> that, that was... Oh, that was so classic. It, it did remind me of when you were on trial, like he's he, where he's trying to talk to Joe while Joe's mid talking to the judge. Yes, it's the most annoying. All defendants do it pretty much. It, it's it is really, you know. I mean, it's like like she's lying, she's lying. You know, it wasn't it wasn't turquoise. It was aquamarine. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. All right, it's where's like, Granite stop. City? How far are we talking? Pardon? Where's Granite City? Granite City? That, I think that's where he said he had to go to Granite oh, City. Oh, Boulder City. Boulder City. Oh, I'm sorry. Boulder oh, that's, City. Yeah, it's down by Hoover Dam. That's it depends on construction or traffic. It's 30 minutes. Probably takes more because there's construction. Okay. So I was just trying to get a sense of that because yes, I mean most traffic, most entire traffic trials literally take 10 minutes or less. Right. Oh yeah. But I mean, we, we set this thing over. We had a bunch of witnesses. That's fine. The state put their case in. Now the defense has to do their case in chief. And he's like, okay, we'll start 10, 10 30. And then he's like, I got, I've got to be in Boulder city in the afternoon. I'm like, I don't know. Three 30. Yeah. <laughs> I would say for anyone else on the planet, sure. You'll be there. But um, with, uh, with Kim involved, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not confident. I'm not confident. Yeah. I'm about to talk to Joe. I'll, I'll offer to cover the, Hearing for him. <laughs> I'll cover the hearing so you can go on for five hours. It makes for, makes Mike's well, job easier. Good content. That's his whole thing, though. Is it's like now? So it's the defendant's case in chief. Now this is his opportunity. This is what he's doing all this stuff for. Oh yeah, yeah. This is just he, he, he enjoys it. So he's going to sit there and talk all he can. Yeah, I, I just. I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. I mean, and, I don't know what he's going to. He'll testify, you know, too. I don't know what. He has nothing to say, but he'll, he'll testify. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I mean, well, when I did my trial, I uh, I was worried. Well, when I tried to withdraw, and one of the reasons why, because the rules of you know, whatever, you know, I don't want to give him all the right. details of it. But then Judge Levitt was like, oh, well, he can just testify in the narrative. Oh, and his eyes lit up, and he was just like, "Oh, yeah, you know." Oh, so, so just, excited. it was brutal. Yeah, and he oh, did. And you saw the you saw how that went, basically. So, but, I don't by the way, I I do have I do have a playlist called uh, Kim Blandino Vexatious Litigant, and I I, I added this to it today because I th I thought it would be over, but it, it's never going to end with Kim. Um, it, it, but if you want to see what what Ben and I are talking about, oh, I have videos on my channel of the, of the whole event. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, do you have? Everyone's been clamoring for the dancing Blandino. Come on, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't have. I don't You're a have pleaser. It what is give the people what they want? I know, I know. You I don't have, have to recreate it. I got, <laughs> I got nothing. You dance, I'll do well, that. I mean, dun, dun, you know. dun, 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 we played, dun, dun, we played dun, dun, the uh, La Technica Club remix. It gets worse. Yeah, you know that, that. That's all I got. That's all I got. All right. Hmm. We should have people well, recreate it and send it to you. 
people recreate their Blandino dance and send it to you, <laughs> and then we'll have a contest. We'll judge who does the Blandino, Blandino dance, dance, the best. dance contest. Yes, I like it. I like it. Well, you are the best, Ben. Good sport. Thanks for coming out. Thanks to everybody else for coming out. Good times. Yes, this I'll is see you all uh, soon. yeah. See you what on the twenty seventh now. Mark your calendar. Twenty seventh. Oh God. <laughs>